Hello, my name's Dr. Melissa nuttard Maja, and I work with the Department of Nephrology at the Princess Alexandra Hospital in Brisbane, Australia, together with my co-authors, Dr. Yun Chi Cho, Dr. Maged Fahim, and Professor David Johnson. I recently published an article called Recent Clinical Trials of Pharmacologic Cardiovascular Interventions in Patients with Chronic Kidney Disease, an update. This article was a critical appraisal of the literature and a follow-up to a review our group published in 2008 with an emphasis on studies that had been published since then. Chronic kidney disease, or CKD, is a common chronic disease, and cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of mortality in this population. Prevalence of cardiovascular disease in patients with CKD is about double that of the general population, yet traditional risk factors such as hypertension, obesity, and dyslipidemia fail to adequately account for the increased risk. It's likely that the pathogenesis of cardiovascular disease in the CKD population is different to the general population, with calcific vascular disease and fluid overload probably playing significant roles. There are many guidelines regarding pharmacologic cardiovascular interventions, but given the likely differences in pathogenesis of disease, as well as the fact that the vast majority of studies on which the recommendations are based excluded patients with CKD, it's not clear how applicable these guidelines and recommendations are to the CKD population. Usual interventions such as the use of aspirin, statins, antihypertensives and so on may not achieve the same benefits in this population. In this review, we looked at the important literature to date regarding the use of multiple interventions, including erythropoiesis stimulating agents, fibrates and statin use in both dialysis and non-dialysis dependent CKD. In addition, we also evaluated the use of antihypertensives, aspirin, agents targeting this disordered bone mineral metabolism such as phosphate binders, vitamin D analogs and calcium emetics, folic acid as a homocysteine lowering agent, antioxidants and the utilisation of multidisciplinary clinics. We discuss the findings as well as strengths and weaknesses and methodological quality of the studies and how we believe the current evidence can be applied to the CKD population. This is our PubMed citation where you can find the abstract and a link to access the full article. I hope that you find our paper informative and useful. Thank you.